Hi, I'm Jacob Halbren, the editor of The National Interest. I'm here today with Andranik Migranyan from the New York Office of Democracy and Cooperation and a student of Russian politics. Andranik, what's the best case outcome for Russia and Ukraine? I think Russia, Russian authorities several times mentioned that the best case scenario to keep the integrity of the country and uh, to have uh, three necessary elements, uh, Ukraine having a non bloc status, Russian language as second state language, and federalization. But unfortunately, neither Washington and Brussels nor Kiev, uh, they are ready for this kind of outcome. And unfortunately, they are pushing the process in Ukraine into either tearing a part of Ukraine with a civil war or a split of Ukraine between uh, the Ukraine in the center and the west and south and east, which leans to Russia because predominant population Russians and Russian speakers. Andronik, you said earlier today that it's not necessarily necessary for Russia to invade Ukraine. Why? Oh, you know, uh, though President Putin asked uh, Federation Council to give uh, the power to use the force in case of large-scale atrocities over there or clashes, but at this moment I think situation radically changed after referendum in Donetsk and Lugansk. Altogether, these regions are the most populous uh, regions in Ukraine and uh, forming their uh, power institutions they declared immediately after the referendum that they are going to form their own army which means they could have enough uh, their own forces in order to protect themselves or even in case of continuing violence on behalf of Kiev authorities against East and South to liberate East and South. At least this is my reading of the situation, which means Russia doesn't need to invade or to use forces. How uh, happy are people in Russia that Crimea has returned to the motherland, as President Putin put it? Oh, practically 90% of Russians are uh, enormously happy. They are very supportive to idea and as a result uh, Putin's uh, rating is the highest since might be many many years, 82 percent. This is unbelievably high rating and then you know psychologically never Russians uh, thought that Crimea really is outside of Russia because Sevastopol was considered to be uh, the city of Russian military glory. Every kid knew about all these, uh, you know, glorious uh, pages of Russian history concerning Sevastopol and Crimea. That's why this was a very special case for Russia. And tell me about Ukraine. How strongly do you think people in Russia feel about the Ukraine and the events there? Oh, you know, it's very important for Westerners to understand that tens of millions of Russians, they have their relatives in Ukraine, a lot of intermarriages. And tens of millions of Ukrainians, they have their relatives in Russia, which means this really is a very uh, close connection between these two peoples and uh, two nations and two countries except, of course, a part of Ukraine which was historically called Galicia, yeah. which was under the domination of Austro-Hungarians, partially under Poles. Uh, you know, they always felt themselves very isolated, and they usually, as uh, President Putin mentioned, psychologically felt themselves very very uncomfortable because they were inferior everywhere where they lived. They were second-rate citizens 
under Austro-Hungarians, under Poles, and that's why, unfortunately, a lot of people over there, they have hatred to everybody. They are nationalists and anti-Russian, anti-Jewish, anti-Polish. How well do you think that Putin has handled the Ukraine crisis? Do you think he's gotten in over his head, as some American commentators are saying, or do you think he's done a good job of handling it? I think until now he is doing a brilliant job. Uh, a Crimean case could be, you know, a textbook case in world political history, how, you know, quickly and without uh, any use of force, uh, this kind of serious thing happened. As a great Chinese thinker and military strategist Sun Tzu once, uh, you know, formulated, the best victory is the victory when you are not using the force and involving even in a battle, when you win without using any force. And this is exactly the case with Crimea. And even vis-a-vis Ukraine, everybody expected uh, Russian tanks invasion, Russian military, nothing is happening. Situation is developing inside Ukraine, and as President Putin mentioned, this is not the problem of Ukraine and Russia, this is problem of Ukraine and Ukraine. Ukraine is deeply divided, and only blind people can think about unified Ukraine as the people who uh, who did a coup and military seizure of power, and now they refuse to negotiate with the people about federalization, and as a result, they are practically splitting the country. Andronik, thank you for taking time from your busy schedule to uh, talk with the national interest. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you for having me.